let's talk about the uh, Sun Bowl here. Um, Pitt, UCLA, this one's kind of fascinating to me. Um, you said there's been massive line movement there. Um, what, recently, like in the last couple of days? Yeah, uh, that one? To, yeah, we're, we're recording this uh, Thursday night, and, and today we saw about three and a half, four points of line movement. Um, back to more of the original number, which was around seven, uh, got bet down to UCLA minus three, three and a half. And now we're back up to seven and a half, even eight in some spots. Um, but again, I, that has a lot to do, I think, with with Pitt's recent uh, opt outs um, for this game. So and everything I've read says that Dorian Thompson Robinson, the UCLA quarterback is going to play as well as running back Zach Charbonnet. So I get I mean, I, I totally understand the live movement. I actually bet Pittsburgh plus seven um, as I saw the line start to move. I was like, oh, I'm going to grab this seven. And then I looked like a genius when it got down to three and a half. And now we're back up to seven and a half, eight. So I think I'm actually going to lose, lose a half a point or a point of closing line value here. So we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. But honestly, and th this is just kind of a, a broad stroke um, general strategy for me. But like I said, I, I have found that the market really overreacts to guys being out. So a lot of times some of these ugly games where it's like, God, how could you bet on that team? Like those are the teams that I'm generally betting on because there's generally a lot of value there in the number. Yeah. Yeah, Pitt's like a mash unit here. You know, Keaton Slovis in the portal. They've got three quarterbacks out of this game. Um, Izzy Abaniconda, their their stud running backs opting out. They got receivers in the portal. They got defensive play. They got defensive linemen everywhere in the portal. It, it's hard for me to see how. I mean, I can maybe see him covering because you know seven eight points it's hard for me to see how they win if ucla is going to play their guys you know if they're actually going to yep. play if zach charbonnet is actually going to play if dorian thompson robinson is actually going to play so and we'll get into this a little more on the on on a different game we're going to talk about but does it actually make it harder when these guys don't opt out because we're not it's not like they're just playing and then they're just getting their normal reps in. Some of these guys are are playing. Like I'll, I'll give an example from what we saw here earlier on, on Thursday, which was Mo Ibrahim for Minnesota, a uh, great running back for Minnesota, did not opt out. He played. He got I was roughly like 13, 14 carries in the first half and then basically didn't play in the second half. Yeah. And... So how do you, <laughs> has that kind of entered your mind as you've done some of these plays and, you know, kind of thought to yourself, okay, well, this guy isn't opting out, but you know, what, what are we getting out of him this game? You know, has that, has yeah. that kind of entered your mind or, or have you kind of had to just focus on like who's playing and who's not and just kind of hope and pray at that point? Yeah. it Honestly, I think that probably does make it more difficult because it's like, okay, if, if the guy opts out two weeks before the game or a week before the game, you know the coaching staff at least has time to get the next guy prepared, you know, craft a game plan around where there might be deficiencies. But if you've got a guy that's going to play but, you know, be on a pitch count or or whatever the case may be, that I think that does make it a little more difficult um, to to handicap the game. So I, I've been trying to to get a handle on that, and and that's that kind of played into my Pittsburgh play here Uh plus the seven against against UCLA because I even if Charbonnet and, and DTR play it's like I I'll be curious to see what that actually means uh, in terms of their effectiveness well you, you mentioned you had you know you made a play at pit plus seven um a lot has kind of happened I think since since then it, you know I'm not holding your feet to the fire here but just you're like do you, do you do you expect Pitt to win at this point or do you or would you pick UCLA like just Straight prediction, because I, yeah, I think UCLA is going to win this one. Yeah, straight up, I I, I would take UCLA, uh, but but I just so my my projection on the game, um, you know, again not accounting for injuries or opt outs, was UCLA minus two. Yep. Uh, and when I look at, you know, again I look at their season long data, and then I look at the recent data, and and the recent data actually I, I would have Pitt minus uh, thirteen. So that that kind of played into it too. So it's like okay, down the stretch, Pitt was two touchdowns better than this team. So you know, kind of weighing those opt-outs and is there, is there almost 21 points of value on UCLA given those opt-outs? And I, I, I just can't get there. I just think, especially in college, I feel like individual players are often overrated uh, from a betting perspective in, in the marketplace. 
Yeah, I think I think that's fair. I mean, we we certainly see that all the time where, you know, an injury see I, I see it in basketball too. They they swing these lines for one guy and you think, oh, you know, that's gonna be that's gonna be it for the other for the opponent as far as a, a betting stance or whatever, and, and it doesn't work that way. I don't and that's I think that's kind of hard to measure. Like I, I it's hard to measure how the, the the rest of the team has to kind of everyone's got to do a little more. Everyone's yep. a little more motivated. Everyone's a little more intense. They know they don't have their guy. And so that I think that's where analytics and like <laughs> real life kind of, yep. you know, conflict yeah. or whatever, just because, I mean, how do you measure what that means for, for the, you know, you're going to get what out of these extra, you know, what, what extra are you going to get out of these guys and how do you measure that is probably the, the last yeah. kind of, untapped area of analytics, I think is like, how yeah. what can you, how do you measure that? Yeah. At, at that point, I, it, it just becomes more art than science. I think you just have to kind of have a feel for it. And, and a, a lot of times in, in those situations, if it's not a team that I don't have a decent handle on, like it, it makes it way harder. But, you know, as someone that follows like, like Ohio state in the big 10, I can, I'm, I'm much more close to those. So I can, I can have a, a better feel for how that, uh, how that should affect the line when, when guys are out. Yeah.